In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use a MIDI keyboard to input notes into a MIDI track. The first thing I'll want to do is go to the Arrangement view by hitting Tab on my computer keyboard. So next I want to make sure that my MIDI keyboard is connected to my computer and talking to Live. So on a Mac, I go to Live and Preferences. And I'm going to go to the Link MIDI tab. And just on this bottom section down here, look for my keyboard. So I've connected my Keystation Mini 32, um, but I've noticed that everything is turned off. So what you want to do is under Track, turn this on, and you'll also want to turn on Remote. So these two, uh, Track and Remote for my Keystation Mini 32. So whatever keyboard you connect, you've connected, uh, you should see it here. If you don't see the keyboard here, you might need to get drivers for your keyboard. And so you would get that from the website of the manufacturer for your keyboard, install those drivers, probably restart your computer, start Ableton, and then you should see the keyboard and then you can activate and turn it on. And you should only have to do this one time. And after this, whenever I have the keyboard connected, it'll be recognized in Ableton Live. So I'm going to enter some notes in uh, using the drums again. So I'm going to go to my drums tab here and pick a, one of these drum racks. Later on, I'll be showing you how to uh, use uh, or come up with a custom drum pad as well as other sounds. So I'll grab this. So now this is loaded. In order to be able to play notes uh, on this track, what I need to do is make sure the track is record enabled. So that's this button way over here on the right hand side. So right now it's turned off. If I click on it, it turns red. Now it's record enabled. And I should be able to hit keys on my keyboard to make notes of sound. Now depending on what notes, so if I hit a middle C for instance, you can see I'm getting a little flashing light down here, but there's no sound connected to this. So you can see we have little tabs here in the drum rack. And so only ones that are lit up, the light gray, actually have assigned a sound. So I might have to play different notes. I'm going to work my way down. So now I can play. I found, uh, so you can see the names here. Here's F2. Um, so this is probably E2 right here. Okay, so now I've found these notes on my keyboard, and now the next step is to actually uh, record into a track. So I've record enabled it. Uh, I pick a location. If I want to start at the beginning, I can just hit stop twice, and it brings my cursor to the beginning. You can see my counter here. Measure one, beat one, uh, and the first 16th note. And if I want to record from somewhere else, I can just click somewhere else in the track. And so I now might get cursor here. And if I were to start uh, hitting the record button, I would start recording from this place. Let me do that. And if I just hit record, Now, if I record like that, it's hard for me to keep track of time. If you noticed, I actually heard a bit of a metronome at the beginning, but then it stopped. So what we actually want to be able to do is turn on the metronome while we're recording. So I'm going to delete this track for now. Click on it and delete. And I'll just click here again. So the metronome is right up over here. And so to activate it during playback, I'm going to click on it. So now that it's yellow, it's actually going to play uh, during playback. In fact, even if I just hit play, it will play even while I'm just playing a track. Obviously, it'll also do that when I'm recording. Another handy feature in the metronome, if I click on this little uh, metronome settings uh, switch right here, I'm going to click on that. And you can see I've got a count in, so I can have no count in. Uh, I can have one bar, two bars, or four bar count ins. Uh, there are some different sounds I can use. Uh, so I'm just going with a classic sound for now. And for now, I'm just sending it to auto. So it'll, it'll uh, click to whatever I have my uh, grid set to, I think. So I'll just leave this at auto. And I believe this will just do eight notes, uh, sorry, quarter notes for us. 
And so again, I suggest either two, four bars, or at least one bar count in. So that gives you time to prepare. So you'll notice that if I go out of here now, if I hit record, we'll get a two bar count in, uh, and then I can start recording my notes. Okay, so now I can record MIDI directly in, and if I want to edit this, I can double click on this, and I get this window, and now I can go through here and edit my MIDI information. Uh, a couple things about also recording in MIDI data, or any MIDI clips, is that, I'm going to click on another place here, is if you find that you want to work at a really fast tempo, but you can't play it, I'm going to grab my metronome here and bring this down, so I click and drag, to change the metronome. Uh, so I can make it, um, now notice as I'm dragging it, that um, up on the top here are, these are bars and beats, and there's a menu down here which is time in seconds. And you'll notice that the bars and beats don't change, but the time does as I move the metronome. Because as I bring the metronome down slower, my time will slow down, and as I increase this, the time speeds up right, in relation to bars and beats. So that's something to keep in mind there. It's a nice feature in live. So if I bring the tempo way down, let's say to 60, or I can also just click on here, and if I just type in my keyboard 80 and return, now it'll play at 80 beats per minute. And so I've clicked here to start recording. Okay, so now I was able to enter in all this, and now I can speed the tempo back up, go to the metronome, and drag it with my mouse, or again, type with my keyboard 128, hit the enter, and now I can play from here. All right, excellent. So um, a couple other things that will come in handy when you're playing it in, in MIDI is that what might happen is you can kind of see my playing got off in a few places. Like right here, this got off just a little bit. So what I could do is actually click and drag it onto the grid, right? Same with this note right here. Uh, so I can manually try to do that. There's also a nice feature in Ableton Live called quantization. Uh, and this is pretty common in lots of different uh, DAWs. So I'm going to uh, hit Command A or Control A on Windows, and that will select all my notes. So if I do that while I'm up in this window, Command A, it'll select everything. So I want to make sure I'm actually, I'm in my clip. I'm going to click once down here and now hit Command A to select all these notes. Alternatively, I could click and drag with my mouse and select all the notes this way. And then if I Control click on an empty space here, I'll get this window and I can hit what's called quantize. Uh, before I do this, I'm gonna hit quantize settings. And this is where I can adjust the different settings so I can quantize to whatever the current grid is or to the quarter note or to the eighth note. Uh, I'm gonna hit quarter note and just show you what happens. And I'm just going to quantize the beginning of every note. And so the duration will stay the same and I'm gonna do 100%. So it's gonna snap it to this grid. I'm gonna hit okay. So that's quite different. Let me Command-Z and undo that. And now let me redo that. So redo quantize notes. So you'll notice it moved everything, so everything is on a quarter note now. That's not what I want. So I actually want it on an eighth note. So Command-Z, undo, and then Control-Click, and hit quantize settings. And so I want to set this, this to eighth notes. Um, and just so you're aware, the eighth T means triplet. So anything with a T means triplets. So 16th note triplet versus 16th note, eighth note versus eighth note triplets. So I'm going to do uh, eighth notes, hit OK. And so now everything's locked into the grid, and I can hear it.
Now it might mean I have to still move some things around, like I might not like the placement of some of these notes, and so at some point I could just grab a couple of these and move them over. Uh, so I can still move them after. So I generally recommend quantizing first and then moving the notes around. So that's the basics in terms of being able to record MIDI using your MIDI controller.